The UN Sustainable Development Goal 14 aims to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. So how are we doing? Well, many marine species, habitats and ecosystems have suffered catastrophic declines and climate change further undermines ocean productivity and biodiversity. Did you know that a substantial fraction of the coastal ocean suffers from pollution, eutrophication and oxygen depletion? Our oceans are stressed by warming and many marine species are threatened with extinction. I'm Tracy Rogers and I'm a professor of ecology. I'm at UNSW in the School of Biological Earth and Environmental Sciences. Let's look at the first of the key targets, which is to reduce marine pollution. Around 8 million metric tonnes of plastic enters our oceans each year. This is equivalent to 16 shopping bags full of plastic for every metre of coastline, excluding Antarctica. So we're not doing so good. In fact, the rate at which plastic finds its way into our ocean is increasing and by 2025, it's predicted that we will be putting enough plastic in the ocean to cover 5% of the Earth's entire surface in cling wrap. That's each year. So does it matter that there's so much plastic in the ocean? Globally, about one third of all turtles are likely to have eaten plastic in some form. But lots of marine animals mistake plastic for food, such as seals, fish, and whales. At least 690 marine species have been documented to have encountered with plastic marine debris. Either they've eaten it or they've become entangled in it. And of those species, at least 17% are vulnerable, listed as either near threatened, endangered or critically endangered. Seabirds such as albatross, gannets, shearwaters and petrels are particularly vulnerable. Unfortunately, many of these seabirds are already at risk so where is this plastic coming from? All over the world. The darker the colour of this figure, the more mismanaged plastic that country has, so more likely their plastic will end up in the ocean. Gold Star for New Zealand, Namibia, Oman, the Scandinavians and the Canadians. But it doesn't matter who produces this marine plastic, because once it's in the ocean, it travels in ocean gyres around the world. Inside the gyres, the water is stationary and it's here that plastics accumulate. Over time, garbage patches form. and The most well-known is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. But there's a garbage patch in each of our ocean basins. What can we do about it? Well, how about your weekly shop? The container your apples come in or the plastic bag that you put them in? These are single-use plastics. So how do I get out of the shop without using any of these single-use plastics? Well, for a start, those plastic bags. One trillion single-use plastic bags were made globally in 2019. Replacing them with reusable bags is an easy start and one we're all embracing anyway. Lots of countries have banned plastic bags already. Rwanda did this back in 2008. Bottled water. In Australia, we use 118,000 tonnes of single-use water bottles every year. And that's just Australia. By the way, our tap water is fine, often better tasting than the stuff you buy in a bottle, unless you live in Adelaide, or if you're buying that lovely Norwegian water, but you get my meaning. So replacing bottled water with your own reusable bottle, and if councils provide water taps around town, this easily eliminates another 200,000 tonnes of plastic every year. All we need is a couple of public taps. But managing our waste is also important. Did you know that only about 40% of those plastic bottles are recycled? The rest go to landfill or to our waterways. A discarded water bottle will take at least a thousand years to biodegrade, but that doesn't mean it's gone just that it's broken down into thousands, even millions of tiny pieces, into microplastics that can make their way into our food and water. A second key target is to reduce ocean acidification. So what is ocean acidification? As our activities have pushed more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, lucky for us, a great deal of this extra carbon dioxide has dissolved into seawater. 
The oceans have been like a giant sponge, absorbing up to 30, even 40% of our extra carbon emissions. But what happens when this extra carbon dioxide dissolves into seawater? Well, the carbon dioxide and water molecules reconfigure and they make carbonic acid. But many marine creatures use calcium carbonate to make their shells and skeletons. In more acidic oceans, they can't do this. They can't make those shells properly. Now from blue whales to plankton, the oceanic food web is complex. And although plankton are tiny, they are vital for many of the species higher up on the food chain. If these tiny plants and animals at the base of the food chain can't make their shells, this will have a flow on effect that will change the very composition of our oceans. Another of the key targets is to fish sustainably. Yet, at least one third of our fish stocks are overfished and one third to half of vulnerable marine habitats have been lost. What can we do? We're buying locally caught fish rather than imported fish. This means not only can you find out where your seafood was caught, whether it's caught in a sustainable fashion, it'll also taste better. Where you buy tinned or imported seafood, check the labels for how it was caught. Read the label carefully. If you're buying tuna, see what type of tuna you're about to buy, as some species are endangered. Only buy seafood with labelling that tells you what the species is, where it was caught and how it's been caught. And a way to do this more easily is to buy seafood that has the Marine Stewardship Certification, an MSC tick. The MSC labelling enables all products to have total traceability. This means you can track what you buy from catch to plate as it is packed and frozen on the boat. This is an easy way to make sure you're eating seafood taken from a sustainable fishery. Achieving Sustainable Development Goal 14 is achievable. We can conserve and sustainably use our oceans, seas and marine ecosystems. Biodiversity losses in the ocean are less pronounced than those on land and many marine species are capable of recovery once pressures are reduced or removed. However, achieving this goal will require rebuilding marine life as the life support systems, the populations, the marine habitats and the ecosystems that deliver the many benefits society receives from our healthy oceans.